Can video games actually be good for the environment? Coral Island claims to place an emphasis on environmental awareness, but how much truth is there to that claim? After all, all we've really seen from their trailer is someone cleaning up trash at the bottom of the ocean. Instead of doing yet another Coral Island trailer breakdown video, since those are rather plentiful on YouTube right now, I thought we'd do something quite a bit different by blending science and video games and talking about Coral Island's plan to restore the coral reefs of the island and compare it to how that very same objective is being handled in real life as we speak. I did also get a bit of information that hasn't been made public yet straight from one of the studio managers, so who knows, you might even learn a thing or two. If that sounds like a bit of a reach though, bear with me. I've spent the past six hours doing research for this video and going through the entirety of the dev diaries on the Coral Island Discord, and I can pretty much guarantee that you will learn something new about Coral Island. So if you're anything like me and are incredibly hungry for all things Coral Island right now, sit back, relax, and enjoy. What's going on ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Dita up here. If you haven't heard of Coral Island before, I highly encourage you to go check out the video I just released on it, explaining what it is and why I think it's going to be amazing. That video is currently blowing up for me right now, so to everyone who has watched it, thank you. I really do appreciate it. Without further ado, let's dive right in. <laughs> we already know that you'll be able to dive to save coral, and while that does seem like a cool mechanic, cleaning up trash to restore the coral reefs, the reality of it is that both in-game and in real life, restoring the coral reefs is going to take much more than a little garbage collection. Before we can really talk about what Coral Island is doing to bring awareness to coral reef restoration and how they plan to handle that in-game, we first need a basic understanding of what is happening in the real world. You know, that mythical place that has lifelike graphics, permadeath, and way too many NPC interactions for my liking. Yeah, that real life. Whether you believe in it or not, over time, global warming has gotten worse, and the effects of it have become increasingly apparent. As a born and raised Texan, for example, those winter storms we experienced only several weeks ago are thought to have been caused by rising temperatures in the Arctic Circle, forcing cold air south. The effects of climate change don't just have an impact on humans, though, but our environment as well, including, you guessed it, coral reefs. Now, while I do have a degree in biology, I am far from an expert on how climate change affects coral reefs, but I will do my best to sum up my research in an easily digestible way, and I'll also link to everything I talk about in the description in case you'd like to learn more for yourself. First of all, why should we care about coral reefs? Aside from their natural beauty, they are home to thousands if not hundreds of thousands of different species of plants and animals, all of which play an important role in a coral reef ecosystem, which in part plays a crucial role in our economy. Not only for coastal towns that rely upon tourism from their reefs, but also for fishing. They can also reduce energy of waves by up to 97% according to Manga Bay, minimizing coastal erosion and potential damage to coastal buildings. If you've ever been swimming in an ocean, you'll know that the waves don't only exist on the surface, but also deep below. For me personally, as a kid, my mom used to tell me to be very careful going underwater when swimming in the ocean, as there's a very strong undertow that you can't see from above the water surface. I didn't really know what she meant until I experienced it for myself. Waves have some serious power to them, and having reefs to help minimize that power, especially during something like a coastal storm, is a huge deal. Unfortunately though, coral reefs are in danger, and unless we do something, they might be in trouble. There are three main things harming coral reefs. The first of which is pollution, not necessarily exclusively in the form of trash as is represented in Coral Island, but also in the form of chemicals, whether that be through acid rain caused primarily by the burning of fossil fuels, or through things like fertilizer running off of fields, gardens, grass, etc., and into the water. The second is overfishing. Fishing in itself is fine, but overfishing, however, is not. And the third is an increase in water temperature due to climate change. Not necessarily a constant permanent increase in water temperature, but an increased frequency in cycles of warmer water. This stresses the corals out, causing them to lose their algae, which is the source of their vibrant colors. This is why this event is commonly referred to as coral bleaching. Think of it like this. What if I asked you to go 24 hours without sleep? You could probably do it, right? You likely wouldn't enjoy it, but your body could probably handle it. 
A week later, if I asked you to do it again, you'd probably have no problem staying awake for another 24 hours, since you had an entire week to recover in between. Now, what if I asked you to go 24 hours without sleep and then asked you to go another 24 hours without sleep, but with only a few hours of sleep in between? You might be able to do it, but keep that up long enough and eventually you wouldn't be able to anymore. Your body simply wouldn't be able to run on that little sleep. The same thing is happening with the corals. They can handle a little bit of warmer water, but prolonged exposure induces stress, causing them to not only lose their algae, but also to stop reproducing. Again, relating this back to humans, if you were starving and freezing to death, you probably wouldn't be thinking about doing push-ups or going for a run to stay fit. Your body would go into survival mode and you'd be spending every ounce of energy you had on staying alive. Corals are no different. Not saying that they can do push-ups, but that they too prioritize survival. As a result, scientists are trying to assist coral reproduction through a variety of methods, including asexual reproduction via budding, where small segments of coral are cut off and allowed to grow into full-grown corals in a controlled environment before being reintroduced into the natural environment, and sexual reproduction, which is likely to be the method represented in Coral Island. Stay with me. I promise all of this will tie back to the game in just a sec. I'm going to drastically oversimplify the process of assisted sexual reproduction here, but basically how it works is scientists go out to the reefs and find the most fit and healthy coral they can, collect their sperm and eggs, and bring them back to the lab to breed them. This alone increases their chances of reproductive success from roughly 0.2% in nature to upwards of 90% in the lab, according to a video on coral reef restoration by Vice News. Through this process, they create what are known as super corals, or the very best of the best. They train them to be more resistant to higher temperatures, just like you or I could work out to become stronger or study to become smarter, and then breed them in order to eventually get corals that are more heat resistant than their predecessors. This process is known as assisted evolution. Lastly, the scientists then coat these little tetrapods with the fertilized eggs and place them out into the coral reefs, allowing these super corals to grow and help restore the coral reefs to their former glory. In Coral Island, we too will be attempting to help restore the coral reefs to their former glory. While picking up trash from the ocean floor will be a part of that, the act of picking up trash is actually part of something much bigger. We already know that there is a lab on Coral Island run by Ling, the island's resident marine biologist who is assisted by Surya, a recent marine biologist graduate that moved to the island around the same time as you did to conduct his fellowship with Ling. Taking a look at the Coral Island wiki, we can see that Ling has dedicated her life to the study of coral reefs and how to make them more resistant to rising ocean temperatures. Sound familiar? They too are researching and breeding super coral, and they need your help. You see, like any good scientists, Ling and Surya aren't just trying to make super coral blindly. They first had to conduct some research by placing beacons at various depths in the waters surrounding the island. These beacons would scan, analyze, and transmit data about clusters of coral back to the lab where they could then be analyzed further. The problem is, due to the obscene amounts of trash that have somehow ended up at the bottom of the ocean, the beacons got buried in it, and their ability to transmit data was compromised. It's at this point that we come into the picture with the mission of cleaning up the coral reefs in order to uncover the beacons and get this vital information back to the lab. I don't know about you, but Coral Island just got a lot more interesting because of this. As for how the trash got there in the first place, we don't quite know yet, but we do know that in Coral Island, similarly to Joja in Stardew Valley, there will be an antagonist in the game, or evil villain, if you will, by the name of Pufferfish Drilling Corporation. Their goal is to start drilling for oil on and around Coral Island, and I'm going to guess that they are the ones responsible for all of the pollution. Yet another real-world concern for corals. As I mentioned earlier, I read through every single post on the developer diary on the Coral Island Discord server, and let me tell you, that's no small feat, especially in one sitting. If you plan to do the same, I wish you the best of luck. It's, uh, dense, to say the least. Through this, though, I did manage to find a few tidbits of info that have to do with diving the coral reefs that I think could pan out to be really cool. I'll throw them on screen as we talk about them so you can know where I'm pulling my theories from. 
Just a heads up though, very little of this is 100% confirmed, and I'm going to be speculating quite a bit as I'm trying to make sense of very little information that happens to also be written in developer speak, making it even less useful to the average reader. Regardless, I still think there's some gems in here, starting with the diving suit. We can see in the trailer that the player is wearing a diving suit. The current plan is to allow you to customize the diving suit's appearance, most likely at the lab, but this isn't fully decided upon yet. Your character will then automatically change into it as soon as you start diving. Also in the trailer, we see the player breaking up trash with their pickaxe, but you'll also be able to use your axe or scythe to remove trash as well, which is pretty convenient. From the map of the diving areas that was shared, we can see there's four different zones, north, south, east, and west, each presumably having four different depths to dive at, just like is pictured here. I believe that each of these combinations of location and depth will be treated as a level, so by that logic, there will be at least 16 levels in total, each having the potential to look and be laid out differently from one another. Speaking with one of the studio's managers, the goal is to make them feel open and expansive, the complete opposite feeling of the minds, which are meant to feel cramped, almost claustrophobic. You'll be able to select which level you'd like to dive at, and whatever progress you make on each level will be saved whenever you leave. That all sounds pretty par for the course, but one thing that caught my eye was this. Diving. Save the last player location when exit a diving level. Great English, I know, but if they as developers have to add the ability to save your location when you leave, to me, that means there's either multiple exit points on each diving level, or what would be even cooler is that you could potentially surface at any point in time in order to leave, regardless of where you are in the level. After all, coral reefs aren't that deep, so it would make sense. While you're down in the reefs collecting trash, there will be certain UI that is specific for diving, perhaps with things such as a percentage of the level complete, where both trash removed and beacons cleared would likely contribute to that. There's also mention of an underwater bubble, perhaps to refill your oxygen reserves while diving without having to surface. From the sound of things, the goal is going to be to completely clear all trash and discover all beacons from all 16 different diving levels. From a little birdie on the team, I've been told that there will be between two and four beacons per level for you to find. You'll also be able to collect kelp, which I assume will be an optional objective, and after processing it, turn it into ling at the lab in exchange for upgrades to things like seeds and animal feed, to name a few, the former of which having an effect on the quality of crops you can produce. Once a level is completed, I do believe you'll be able to return to it, perhaps to go back for that optional collectible kelp, which is nice to hear, or at least, so I hope. Okay, listen up. This next piece of info is something that I don't think exists anywhere else yet. So if you're going to walk away with one new piece of information to get you hyped about Coral Island, let this be it. Before that though, if you could take a sec and leave a like on this video, I'd greatly appreciate it. Please and thank you. One interesting gadget that we'll have at our disposal is a drone, which apparently will spawn in with you when you go diving. It will have two confirmed, maybe three if I'm speculating correctly, primary functions. The first of which is to act like a homing device. It is equipped with the ability to pick up on the weak signal being given off from the beacons. As you navigate the coral reefs searching for the beacons, it will emit a light that will blink faster and faster the closer you get to a beacon. Once you find a beacon and clear it of debris, the drone will then perform its second function, which is to upgrade the beacon with self-cleaning technology, preventing debris from collecting around the beacon and the area it is surveying moving forward. The third speculated function is that it can mark coral, presumably to help Ling and Surya identify the best coral to use when trying to create their super coral. Lastly, there's mention of coral being found in other areas of the game, such as the beach and the Lake Temple area. As for the beach, my guess is it will somehow be tied to a cutscene where some dead, bleached coral washes up on the shore, prompting you to take action and help save the reefs after seeing the damage firsthand. It could also be something far more simple, like in Stardew Valley, and act as just a collectible, forageable item on the beach. As for the Lake Temple area, which as a reminder is where the Goddess of Flowers is summoned from in the trailer, I haven't the faintest idea. 
She's responsible for rejuvenating the island's water, soil, and well-being, so I'm sure she's tied into saving the coral reefs pretty closely, but if you have any guesses as to why there might be coral present in the lake, let me know. So to answer the question I posed at the very start of this video, how much emphasis is being placed on environmental awareness by Coral Island? I think the answer is a lot, and a large portion of that seems to have to do with the dev team themselves. Being an Indonesian studio, with several of the team members having grown up in and several currently living in Indonesia, their personal experiences are what drives this desire to promote environmental awareness in Coral Island, and not just because it's an interesting and unique game mechanic. They're even going so far as looking into different non-profits to partner with that focus on coral reef restoration. That is something I can get behind, and that is where I'm going to end for today. I hope you all enjoyed this deeper look at some of the mechanics behind Coral Island and the real-life equivalents behind them. I sure had fun researching everything, and once again, if you want to learn more, I've left some resources down in the description. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next Coral Island video real soon. Until then, as always, take care.